Uh, good day to everyone. My name is Francisco Calero. Uh, I work at Kin Analytics, and I'm going to present to you uh, one of the projects that we did together with the government uh, of Ecuador. Uh, mobile data to assess the compliance of quarantine after receiving a positive, positive test of COVID-19. It was case study in Ecuador. Um, First of all, a disclaimer, uh, the data that we use in this program was anonymized and only used to improve uh, the, 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 the policies that were applied throughout the worst months of the pandemic in Ecuador. All the information was aggregated and it was not possible to identify a unique person. I, I do this disclaimer because the, the information that we, that we used uh, was pretty sens uh, sensitive, so uh, it's a really nice thing to to do about uh, when you are dealing with this kind of, uh, of data, that, that is completely clear what where what you are doing with the data and how you protect the, the the information of all the of the people that you, you analyzed. Also, um, since the original information is very sensitive to the government and to the citizens in Ecuador, we were not able to present to you the, the real results, uh, only general data, uh, and it is because. Uh, it, by, by, by the government. So, so sorry about that. All, all, all the graphs and all the things that I'm going to show you is used by using a dummy, dummy data. Oh, the, the beginning. Uh, in, in March in 2020, um, the Ecuador, Ecuador declared the, the state of exception, which gives uh, the government special powers, especially to access information that otherwise would be restricted, especially in a specific what they do is they create a document that requested all the, the mobile phone uh, service providers to share the information of the of all the people that have tested positive in the in the PCR test. So the use of this information was intended to to understand where these people moved and um, how to try to stop the spread of the virus by uh, uh, generating policies that are more uh, related more smart to the how the population is uh, is moving and how to um, understand uh, what are the better ways to to try to cope with this. So, what was the problem? Uh, obviously, as in, in all of in all of the countries of the world, if a citizen had a possibly a positive PCR test, they have to stay at least in their home in quarantine zone by uh, 15 days after they 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 received the positive test. So one of the key things here is to really understand if they are uh, com complying with this uh, with this policy. But it's not about uh, you know ability and only true or false if they stay at home or not. Is to uh, understand if they leave their home why and where. So uh, try to understand how they move and also in which areas are they moving. So I can uh, you know tighten the, the the controls over there to to try to stop the spread. It's through those places. So uh, we construct a methodology to understand how people adhere to this policy and how to uh, understand the, their, uh, how they uh, move to throughout the mobile data and analysis the policymaker. So our data sources uh, were, uh, first of all, Ministerio de Salud Pública, that is the, the, the head of the, of the health uh, system here in Ecuador. So they provide us two things. First of all, was an ID generated by them, totally anonymized. So we, we didn't ever see the number, the, 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 the identification number or the, or, or the name of the, of the people. And also the date that they, they has uh, received the tests, the positive tests, only positive, obviously. Uh, then from the mobile service providers, they provide the, the, the date, the hour and the, dur and the duration of all the pension narrated by voice, text, or, or data throughout the mobile phones to their base stations, and actually, obviously, the location of their base stations. Um, so what were the mechanics of the data sources? So if you request a PCR test, at least at, at, at the first time of the pandemic, uh, they, will, they, they will take your, your personal data, including your cell phone number, and uh, they give you, and they generate the, this ID, this, uh, this Unique ID they, they give to you when you when you perform the test. Then if the page, uh, in the patient have this positive, they 
obviously they, they they tell the patient and they also send their ID and their phone number and the the date to the to the uh, mobile company. So what they do the mobile company basically what it does is to register all the bands that uh, they, they got information about all the bands that they have uh, made in their base extensions and then send back to the government on a daily basis. Obviously, if you are a new uh, patient, what they do is they take the the last fifteen days of your of your movement, let's say, of or your uh, request that you have made to the base station and send them back, send them back to the government too. So, uh, I'm going to explain to you a little bit about the base station technology that is really important in this. Uh, what's very important in this problem? So, here's an example of base station here in the in the city of Quito, that is the capital of Ecuador. And as you can see, it, it is a very a, a very density area, let's say. It, this is because as you are uh, in, in an urban zone, uh, the, the the range of service will will be changing, uh, and obviously the demand or the traffic of the requests of the of the people for the mobile phone are gonna uh, dictate how many base stations do you need and the range of service of each one. So. Um, in the image, um, you will see an estimate how the, the range of this base station will be. But in reality, we don't know how uh, or which base station provides uh, service to, to a specific zone. So it's pretty difficult. And uh, the goal of this is that uh, to understand how the, the events are registered in the base in, in a database. So for example, if you are the green dot, uh, you will be exactly between two base stations, which of the base station is, is providing you the service. In, in, in reality, it could be really randomized. For example, if you usually are connected to a base station, but that base station has a lot of traffic, the, the, the system will redirect you to the other base station, even though you didn't move at all from your current position. So, so is one of the things that we have to understand. and have to clean the data in order to, 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 to solve the problem. So that was in the in the urban area. However, in the in the rural area is is completely different. Well, what's the difference about this is that the distance between the base stations are so much larger in the rural area. As you can see, the the zoom is different. The the the, the later one was fifteen. This one is thirteen. So the problem is that the density is different and also the range of service. So here is uh, the base station usually are in the maximum capacity of, uh, of, of service. Uh, it could be up to several kilometers. Uh, but the difference is that you will not be as close as, uh, as in a rural a a urban area to, to a base station. Um, and, and also in the rural area, the, 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 the range of service could be affected by uh, the landscape. So for example, if you are right next to a hill or mountain, the, the range of service will be different because the, 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 the waves, let's say, will not spread the same way that as if you are, for example, in, in the city. Obviously in the city, uh, for example, buildings will also change that range of service. So it's, it's, it's pretty messy how uh, understand how uh, a base station is providing service. So oh, that's why we control the methodology and we follow the next steps in order to 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 in the data. So first of all, uh, the, the the first challenge was to was to identify the home base station. This is one of the things that the, the mobile providers usually does when they are analyzing their the, the data of their clients. So basically, uh, what we did for was the following. So um, we use this opposition that if there's a base station at which the patient registered the more events that have the longer duration. Therefore, that should be uh, the home base station of that of, of that patient. So, uh, obviously, understanding the the context of, of the of the moment, uh, the mobility restrictions during the pandemic, uh, and the mobility restrictions here, um, what it is that you only can leave your house from eight hours. The other that didn't work with the, with the health the, the workers. However, all the others didn't have the, the permission to leave their homes, uh, at least in the 66% uh, of the their time. So what we did is that one person stayed at home or stayed at home base more than 44, 45% uh, of all the time. 
therefore that should be the, the home base station. So the procedure that we did was we take the last 15 days uh, from uh, before the, the positive test and we sum up the duration of all the beds uh, registered on each base station from each patient. And then we estimate the percentage that they stayed at that base station. So if we identified a base station that has more than 45%, therefore uh, we assigned it as the, of the home base station. So th th there are pretty limitations about this. As, as, as I told you, the technology is not perfect. And uh, first of all, the, the data of the of the MSP, the the, the public health uh, of the public health system here, uh, the, the the data was was not perfect. So, for example, uh, we encounter cases such as the a seven year old that has a cell phone assigned that probably was from their parents, not from the patient. So, if the parents leave their house, they are allowed, let's say, to do that. But uh, no, the patient, and we, uh, we will be seeing, uh, let's say, a noise. Uh, also, what we did in country was, for example, uh, an 80 year old patient that has re uh, resulted positive, but I was going throughout the city of Guayaquil at 3 a.m. in the morning. Uh, Guayaquil is the, the second largest city in, the, in Ecuador, the, the second most important, the largest city in Ecuador. Um, so, uh, there the, the was this problem with the data, pretty difficult to try to, to clean it up. But, but, but within that, you know, when you aggregate it, the, those special cases will be uh, spread throughout all, all the sample. Also, also uh, one of the problems, the limitation with the, with the mobile data is that, uh, for example, if the patient use uh, Wi-Fi in their houses, they will not be registering any bandit base station. So uh, if you are in your home and you're using Wi-Fi and you are not uh, calling or texting, therefore we will not see that you are registering any events. Usually that's not the case in Ecuador, not everyone has Wi-Fi. Uh, one of the things they usually use they, 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 they are mobile to, to, to do anything. So, um, you, but it is important to, to recognize that. And also if a patient, for example, moves to the hospital uh, because of a health emergency or something like that, we will not be able to, to understand it. Uh, because you know, you identify the by station of the hospitals and all that is is, is pretty messy. It can, it can get pretty messy, so that that's the limitations. However, what we result is that after three months of doing this uh, this project with the with, with the government, uh, we 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 analyzed and what we find is that uh, at least for the seventy six percent of them, we were able to identify a home base station. So I, I think it's what uh, pretty well because of, uh, usually the, the, all the other cases where uh, that the people didn't register any, any events uh, or really a, a little bit of events. So uh, it was pretty difficult. The next process uh, was to define a home boundary and this is understanding or oh, what's the necessity of this is that due to technology, it is not possible for us to capture small movements. For, so for example, let's say you are the, the green dot, your home base station is the blue dot here, but you are right in the middle between two base stations. So uh, it could be, uh, as I explained to you before, it could be randomized which base stations uh, give you service. So it's very important to understand this and try to not penalize or not to uh, uh, analyze uh, a movement that you are not certain that, that, that they have uh, done so. One of the things that we were talking with the experts about is uh, base station of the mobile providers. What they tell you, what they tell us about is that usually the maximum range that uh, urban base station will have is one and a half kilometers, square kilometers. So what we did is okay. So we uh, we let's say draw a uh, one and a half boundary uh, around the base station, and they all the base stations that were inside that boundary will be uh, assigned also a home base station, like for example, in this light. But the, the, the case difference in rural area, because uh, for example, as you can see, uh, you're the green dot again. Um, you are right in the middle between three base stations and the boundary of one and a half kilometers, uh, square kilometers uh, around the, the home base will not include the other uh, base stations. So what we did here is, okay, if th this is happening, uh, we will assign the two closest uh, base stations to the home base station, to the set of home base stations, uh, in order to, to try to minimize the, the chances that we are seeing a movement that we're not certain that happened. And obviously, this is not a problem in the, 
in the urban area because there will be or a there will be base stations that are closer than one and a half kilometers. So one of the considerations is that you know, what I was talking about is not about a, a understanding all the movements. We all we only want to analyze of movements that are real and that were certain that happens uh, due to technology that we're using. So that was our main focus. So yes, we we lose a lot of uh, a little bit of sense of sensibility of the data, especially small movements. But we're completely sure that uh, the the movement that we are analyzing are true, and obviously we're in, more interested in analyzing large movements in this, within the cities because that means that you are traveling, you know, to work. To do one is filter out in possible cases. It was a validation process that we did because we find problems with the data of the mobile and phone providers. So. For instance, well, what we find out is that there was a there, there was a someone in Guayaquil that were a registering bed and dune, and half an hour later they appeared 300 kilometers away in Ibarra registering events, and 20 minutes later they went back to to Guayaquil registering events. So th this was impossible. Um, so what, what we did was to to understand this. In, in fact, it's pretty pretty difficult to explain. This kind of uh, behavior usually the problem is that the mobile the, the mobile phone providers uh, companies they, 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 there were some problem with the gathering of the of the information from their part but they, even they weren't able to explain what happened then there so the objective is to under uh, to estimate the uh, very high speed on impossible speed and if that happens. Uh, uh, we take out those cases so some of the considerations in Ecuador. The, the domestic and uh, domestic and international flights were closed during this uh, during the three four months of the pandemic and also the speed limit is if, if 100 percent outside the city on the 50 percent all the 50 kilometers per hour sorry uh, inside the city so uh, it was a pretty uh, understandable let's say uh, metric so what we do is to order all the bands then we measure the distance between the, the base stations A at time A at time A and then A plus one, and then we measure the 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 the, the duration of the the time between those events um, by having measured the distance and the and the time. Therefore, we have a speed, and obviously because we are uh, we are thinking that is a straight line, for example. It, it will be kind of a lower bound because you know you, you can move in a straight line between the two 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 positions in 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 rural or urban places. So we filter out those events and also uh, that were you know more than one hundred kilometers per hour uh, at a measured speed. And also, uh, what we did is to take out all the events that have occur uh, has a duration that less than one minute. Obviously, for example, if you are driving. And you are receive a text. Uh, it will be a really, uh, or, or you are calling something like that. It will be a really a, a small time if you are driving at really high speed. Uh, or also, for example, in, in in the graph, you can see you are the green dot. You are between two base stations, and you change by some reason which base station are you uh, receiving. So if you the difference between events two seconds, and you have five kilometers away away because of how we measure the. The distance will be pretty different, and so we take all the, the, those places, those cases too. So, uh, one of the we use uh, these three basic metrics. There was first of all the, the hours inside the quarantine zone, zone. Uh, how many uh, how many hours did you spend outside your home during this movement? Uh, also, the days with movement, you will have to stay at least fifteen days inside your your home but if you go out how many days because hopefully you are not doing it uh, on a daily basis and also a uh, the average distance per movement so if, uh, as, as you can see we can measure um, an estimate of the distance that you have uh, encountered so one of the things that they were pretty interesting especially in the large cities so these are some of the general metrics that you find out from the 23,000 people that we analyzed and that uh, we were able to to find a home base station, we found out that 51% of them have break uh, quarantine and they were completely sure because of the same process that we did. Um, outside the time of outside quarantine zone was five hours. In fact, it, it was pretty interesting to, to understand that 
this metric didn't was a significant uh, significant change or exper uh, experiment significant change after the the mobility restriction were a uh, lighter so uh, that's kind of an interesting thing um, that was used by the government to to to, to explain and to take uh, policies that uh, you know like uh, let the people move a little bit because they were not seeing uh, an impact uh, an, an impact uh, directly to this kind of behavior and also the the average day per movement so basically uh, here in Ecuador five of the fifteen days they were not in their home they were registering any movement. Uh, Finally, the, the average distance in the whole country was five kilometers. So it makes sense because a lot of our cities are, are really uh, really small. However, in the large cities, that was different. For example, in Quito, the, the, the capital, it, that was uh, around 10 kilometers per movement. Finally, we have to aggregate information. Uh, obviously, we have three sources, and each source of, of it have different base station location with different ranges. Uh, so the, the main goal was to try to aggregate this data in order to understand where they move in. So we here also uh, lost a little bit of sensitivity because, uh, okay, so we take the, the I, I think the, the AC exit, uh, we asked the government at which aggregation level do they feel comfortable uh, analyzing this data? And they told us uh, there was the zones that is, uh, uh, as you can see there, the, 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 the dark shape, uh, what it's all about is that they feel comfortable. There's a political division that they usually use is a, a set of, uh, of blocks. So basically what we do is all the base stations that were inside this block were assigned, uh, were the aggregator over there and they, we plot it. So uh, choose the day and understand how the people move throughout all the, of the city. Obviously this is dummy data, sorry about that. I would like to, to show you everything that we done with Carto, they they were really uh, pretty uh, impressive of uh, of the maps and how they they will be able to understand all the things. And however, uh, I'm sorry that I can explain to you a little bit about how they they were an impact in the technology. Uh, but I I'm showing you this uh, this video that uh, was one of the things that the, the government showed to. To, to all the citizens by public vision, uh, public television, and they basically what we did, what they did is to understand where people are moving and and start applying different policies or different controls, you know, to to try to 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 cut the spread of the virus. So here's an example of that in, in key to understanding which places they are moving uh, more than than others, understanding what are those what are in those places. And, and trying to, to to make better policies. So uh, they, they, this data was presented on a daily basis on one of the main tools that were used throughout the pandemic here in Ecuador. Uh, several policy makers have meeting with us and they uh, ask us for reports and try to understand how they move and which policies are, are better to do that. So for example, well, uh, we, we identified a lot of local markets that were Having a lot of uh, of people that with positive results going over there, so they tighten the controls, you know, to 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 try to to spread the the, the virus over there. Or, for example, a lot of people move to the center of the city because uh, a lot of reasons. So they tighten the, the 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 mobility controls over there to to only provide access to the ones that really need it, especially for food and health uh, services. And um, finally. Uh, this data, and to be clear about this, was not used to, to apply any fees to the patients since uh, it was never the objective of the study, uh, especially and then because of the technology is not sensitive enough to, to, do, to do this kind of things. Uh, um, and that's it. Uh, thank you very much for listening. I hope that you, uh, <laughs> it was interesting. Uh, so any question here, uh, please. Thank you very much, Francisco. Fascinating insight into the, into the work that you've been doing. Um, we do have a couple of questions on the chat. The first one is from William Hinton, and he would like to say to ask, what type of loss of error function are you using? Okay, so um, thank you very much. Uh, it's more, uh, this one was not training any model uh, at all. It was more of a methodology of cleaning data, mobile data, uh, at, at least, no, not try to identify these kind of things. 
Uh, sorry about that. Uh, I know that we, we could uh, use a uh, of, of the study. It was not in the interest of the policymakers to 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 use these models. Usually, the, you know that there's a little bit of uh, a friction to, to the people. And here in Ecuador, we are not accustomed to, to, to use this kind of models, especially in the government. So it was more like a descriptive way to do it more than a predictive way, so that there was not a loss of error function, sorry. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, and then Gregory Lewis would like to ask, did you try to characterize the activity the patients were undertaking outside of their home base to understand why they broke quarantine? Yeah, uh, we did that. And one of the major objective of this was to, to understand to where they moved. So. We, we identified a lot of the of the of the patients that were going to commercial zones, uh, usually, obviously to to work to 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 get some kind of money to 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 go through the pandemic. So that that was one of the of the key things, let's say, because um, here in Ecuador, uh, at least the fifty percent of the people do not have a, a a formal work. They usually, you know, are their own working. So the, the, the commercial part of the, uh, the activities in Ecuador are really important. Uh, so uh, we characterize it and what we can do uh, as, you know, as uh, the policymaker can, can do is only to tighten the controls to uh, that everyone satisfy the, 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 the measure distance, all that. And that was the objective, not, not to, to try to, to, you know, to apply any fees to them. It's only to try to protect the people that are around them while they're trying to survive this this time. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And um, from this point, what is do you know what the percentage of smartphone penetration is in Ecuador? Oh sorry, what? The percentage uh, of the smartphone penetration, what percentage of people in Ecuador have a smartphone rather than a feature phone? Okay, so that that's pretty good. Um as far as I, I as I remember is more than 90% of the people. Um but the, usually it's not the <laughs> it is like the the the, the low level but the smartphone at least so that that ha has a really high penetration here in Ecuador. Um, okay. mm -hmm. Interesting. Um, and then we have a question here um, from Andian Willatutu mm -hmm. who has asked, "Do you use this kind of data, PCCH, SCCH, and SDCCH in base stations from service providers?" Uh, in fact, no. One of the problems is that the, the documentation generated by the government only uh, specifies that they give us the the, the movement, the events registered. So the, the, the mobile providers do not have a, a really nice relationship with the government because of many issues they have after any more data about it. So we, we have to 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 work with the data that they gave us so that we were enabled to to ask for more data than only the the depends of, of each patient mm -hmm. okay. um and then one final question before we switch to the other speaker uh samuel hayden asked did you try to tie movement during quarantine to the rise or decrease of new cases in specific areas Specific, uh, in specific yes we did that um this was part of a bigger project. In, in fact, we, uh, the, the, the private uh, uh, enterprises basically uh, built the, the, the tool of all of the tool of, um, of data that were used with the, the government during the pandemic. So we not only have the mobile data, but we have how uh, new cases were rising, how uh, people were moving. So we tie that and we start presenting that. Uh, so it was, this was Part of a bigger uh, part of the story. We think that this, but this thing was the 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 thing that was more related to a spatial kind of thing, uh, kind of of study. And however, we did that, and we, for example, Calerón, that is one of the was one of the zones that were more complicated here in Ecuador. We have seen that it was obviously the the one that have uh, more a uh, uh, movement, and that of all people go there. So that there was a, a, a direct relations over there, and we. Uh, apply special policies only to those songs here in, in Quito, for example. So yes, we, we did that we, with other sources that were a little bit more complicated how to, to, 
to explain it to you. And it was a really short time of the presentation. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. And that's it. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, Francisco, thank you so much for answering those questions. Uh, this will be available on YouTube afterwards, everybody. So if you want to share it with any colleagues or, or share on your social media, uh, it will be available. Francisco, thanks for joining us. Um, and this, uh, see you soon.